YouTube, what is up? It's your boy Duke, back here from SportsGamers.com. And today, I'm going to break down the new defense I've been running. And I'm currently on a 32-game win streak using this defense. It is locked down. I'm going to show you guys my setups, my adjustments, um, my coaching adjustments, everything I do on defense that you guys need to know to get more stops. And you guys can see here, first play, we are screaming off that edge. Now, I'm going to showcase this defense in an online game. I'm playing a really good player. He runs a lot of tight. He runs a lot of bunch. So you guys are going to see how I like to defend a lot of the meta. I'm also going to, in a second here, give you guys my abilities, show you guys my team. I've had a few people ask me for that. So just wait a minute, and I'll show you guys that. But I do want to go over some plays first. So basically what I'm doing is I'm in dollar with baseline off. And what I'm doing is I'm running a mix of spinner, cover four, max sting three, and DB fire two. So against these tight and these bunch formations, what I do is I spread out my defensive line, I then slant them to the inside and I press my coverage. So after I do all that, simply I QB contain. That's the base setup and you're gonna see me use that a lot throughout this video, but more importantly, you're gonna see the adjustments that I make. For instance, here, you guys see he's in a tight formation and what do we know about tight formations? They like to throw corner routes. So what you guys see I did there is I put the outside DB on the left of the screen in a deep zone. That's to protect against the corner route. And because I'm using that side, I can take my user. And if I see that the receiver that I don't have manned up anymore, go on a quick out route or route over the middle, I can just use that myself. Now, guys, when I QB contain, what happens against these tight and bunch formations is because I'm not base aligned, you'll see that the slot corners, sometimes I have to move them in a hair or two, but at least one of them. Is on a QB contain, and that's why I'm able to get these defensive ends coming off the, the edge free. Or, you know, if they run a different, like if they run play action a lot of times, or if they block D in pressure, I get edge pressure the opposite way because most of the time I'm blitzing five. So it's a really, really tough blitz to block because you guys can see, like, you'll get the D ends coming free, but you'll also get slot corners coming free, and you know, you never really know. How to block it as you guys can see here look i have a the d end on the left of the screen he's blitzing we got the db on the contain the other side i got the db coming free so you guys can see what i'm talking about bam we're screaming manned up and he doesn't know what okay guys as promised here's my team i'm gonna show you guys my abilities too this is my offense as you guys can see i mean three good receivers good quarterback good running back good old line can't complain nothing crazy here just the hot route master fearless pass lead lead on flacco I got the freight train on quad father and then like I just got route abilities route tech short and elite short out Whichever ones they basically get discounted and then o-line I have edge pros and secure protectors threat on detector and identifier Now here's my defense and my defense is pretty good um, And what I basically do guys is I have blunt and Harrison at safety They're my most unique players because they get discounted man and zone abilities My safeties will either be in zone sometimes I man them up too so I want to make sure that they're pretty uh, versatile, as you guys see. I have a lot of AP on them. I get free prick, excuse me, pick artists, but then also I make sure I have deep route KO for man, and then deep out zone KO for zone. So whether they're man or zone, I get you know this or knockouts. I also have medium on Rodney Harrison. I could do that on Blunt too. I just don't have the AP for it. My outside corners are always in zone, basically Cromwell and Bradbury. Again, they get flat zone and deep out zone for two pick artists for free. Other than that, it's just pick artists on all my DBs that are like in the slaughter backup for free. On my users, you know, for free pick artists. Now, I do have one AP on Milkman and one AP on Mean Joe Green. That's just for inside stuff. And then the Unstoppable Force X Factor, which is crazy. That's a must. I probably should get a free inside stuff at D Tackle. I just haven't spent the coins on that yet. And if I did that, I could use that other AP to free up another KO somewhere. So it's pretty much what I'm doing. Let's get back to the game because I'm mixing in man zone cover two cover three cover four this is in my opinion the best tight and bunch defense in the game so third and 16 he audibles to bunch and anytime I see bunch I'm pretty much expecting corner routes potentially verticals so he actually hit me with a really good play right there with the corner out my mistake right there is I did not back up the corner on that side of the screen so when you're in cover two with a cloud flat and you know someone's running vertical or I'm sorry corner routes at you even if you've zone dropped your cloud flats to 25 yards if they're pressed they'll they just won't get back in time so if you want to defend a corner run you guys can see I, I just set my zone drops to 25 for flats curl flats were five and hook zones were 10 
this is going to allow me to now defend the corner routes with a flat zone as long as I individually back it up. So like here, if he goes to bunch and I want to make sure I stop the corner route, as you guys can see here, I put the right of the screen corner in a cloud flat, back him up. Now I don't have to guard that corner route. Now there's nothing open on the sideline and I can defend the middle of the field. He ends up having to basically throw a pass that would have gotten picked or take a sack, right? You guys can see how that does a really good job against corner routes and still get good pressure. Now, again, he's audibling from tight to bunch a lot, so I'm changing my adjustments up play to play. Again, he tries to hit the corner out. That time, I did not use the same adjustment I did last time. Looking to become a better Madden player and win more games? Check out SportsGamers.com. I built SportsGamers.com from the ground up to give you the best Madden tips, best Madden ebooks, all at the best price, bar none. We have a VIP membership that gives you access to the entire site, every ebook, and every tip we release all year long for only $24.99. Click the link in the description. I've also pinned it in the comments and use coupon code DUKE for 10% off your order. So I went over there to use her myself. Now, my opponent ended up just taking three. I think he gets he, he sensed I had really good defense for him. So he was just going to be happy with his three. So now I'm on offense and it looks like he's running the 3-3-5, or I'm sorry, the 3-3 cub audibling to it from the 3-3 to get his safeties at linebacker. Now this 3-3 cub, this cover four match defense has become very meta actually. And it does honestly it does a really, really good job. I love I love it myself. It does a great job of defending a lot of the route combos people like to run. So one of the things about match is it can be bombed. Now I was basically checking right there when I called verticals to see if he knew how to stop bombs or not. When you out both the verticals and you streak the outside bunch receiver against these quarters matched cover four defenses, that's a bomb. However, he was smart enough to know how to adjust to take that away with his safety on the bunch side, so it wasn't open. But that's still just a, a basically it's a free play for me to see if he knows the adjustment to take away my bomb. And if not, you know, it's a touchdown. In worst case scenario, I throw the ball away. On second down, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm 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 fine with doing that because I still know that I'm, it's like second and three. Even if he knows how to take it away, I have third and fourth down. So actually, I'm on fourth down here. He made different adjustments right there than I expected him to. Like, honestly, this guy seems to be pretty solid on defense. He knows what he's doing for sure with his adjustments. But here, guys, I can see, look, with the threat detector, I see who's blitzing, and I also see his line spread. So I just audible the trap. Um, anytime someone's in a three-man front and they have their line spread, I'm running trap because I have the quad father, and I know that that's, there's no way I'm not getting three yards against that. And again, he does not pinch his line. We run the trap. We might just keep no huddling this every single play until he takes a timeout or something because I like the look. So he finally pinches his D-line. And when I see someone pinch their D-line from Dollar, that's when I start to pass. Because I know that when their line is pinched out of Dollar, the pressure is not quite as fast. Even though you still will have those DBs coming free if you blitz them, it takes like an extra second or two for them to come free. And that extra second or two is enough time for you to dot them up. So that time he shifted his line and was able to gap shoot. I need to see how consistent that gap shoot is. If he chose he can do that again, I'll probably chill out with the run. But you can't just do that one time and expect me to believe it. Like you gotta you gotta show me something. So I'm I'm skeptical, honestly. But he's back in the 3-3. Honestly, I love playing dollar because it's just so easy to run on for me. Because most people don't have good dollar adjustments. Um I'd rather personally play against dollar or 3-3. Because when I see 3-3. Most of the time, I'm just I'm just going to the pass, to be quite honest. And with Dollar, I feel like I have a better mix of run and pass. Whereas here, I'm just going to be pass heavy. So again, I kind of went with a slant post combo over the middle. He chose to use it a slant. I hit the post. Pretty easy concept. This cover four show too. It's really good against taking away the sidelines of corner routes. So one of the easy ways to beat it is just over the middle, right? When you put the user in conflict, you know that they're using the middle. I have identified to see that corner post, or I'm sorry, post slant combo is money. So here, I actually caught him blitzing me, and I just ran flood. It's quick. Flood is my favorite flat pass in the game. You just highball that, it's easy yards. So I'm first and goal at the seven, and this is honestly perfect because I'm getting ball half. I've drained a lot of clock here. I'm gonna start making him get in his timeouts. If I can score a touchdown here, like honestly, I'm in such a good position uh, to basically take full control of this game. So here I'm going to one of my favorite route combos from this area of the field, which is this double post, double uh, hitch. And honestly, I had my hitch wide open and I just chucked it. That was a horrible read. 
I don't know what I'm doing right there. Like I'm looking like a blind man. I don't know what that was. I guess I need to get my eyesight fixed because I had to hitch literally saying, hey, throw me the ball. Please throw me the ball. And I just chuck it into two people. Like, honestly, that was horrible. I don't know what I was doing. Uh, I, I never do things like that. But I am human, man. I am human. Once in a while, I'll make a stupid read. And hey, that's one of the rare, rare ones. And it's kind of like, it's okay because I'm still in a good spot. It's okay. Like, you know, it's not the end of the world. He's locked. That's a pick six. We got to get a pick six there. We got to get a pick six there. Oh, but I'm in a pretty good spot because, I mean, his offense hasn't done much. You guys can see I got really good defense for what he's doing. There's 15 seconds left, so we're probably just going to half down three, right? You would think. Um, and we're okay with that. I don't really feel like he's going to get in field range, but, hey, we'll find out. We're about to find out. Um, okay, so right there. He audibled into trips, and I wasn't expecting that. He's mostly been going, like, bunched and tight. So once he audibled into trips, I was like, mm, I don't like that because I feel like he might just try to chuck, like, the verticals play right down the seam. I wasn't prepared for that. So I had to uh, go ahead and call a timeout and uh, change my defense up a little bit. So, like, here I can just go man coverage, and now I'm not worried about him running verticals because I feel like that's probably what he's going to try to do. So, guys, you see I put the safety on the right in the flat. That's uh, zone drop to take away a potential corner out to the tight end. And, oh, he just, oh, I did not expect that. That was smart by him. He did a little corner C route on the outside from verticals. Ah, oh, good play, man. That was a good play. I can't even hate. That was a really good play. Um, So now he's in field goal range. But, you know, I'm thinking he'll probably just get three before half now. There's nothing open. Could have That should have been a pick. Like, come on, man. Come on, man. So you guys can see my end of half strategy is a bit different. Um... I'm playing it a bit differently here just because I know, you know, he's already in field goal range. So I just don't really want to give up a touchdown. But also, I don't want to give him forever either. So we're going to play a little bit different than I normally would here. I'm protecting the sideline and in the middle. The running back, we're just going to give it to. Oh, we can't make that tap. Wow. We, we got to get a knockout right there. I literally did not even use him because I figured the deep zone knockout would trigger i would be able to get a knockout animation I'll, i don't just have deep zone i have flat too and i i think i have mid zone so i don't know how we didn't get a knockout there that's i don't even know why he went for two but that was a really bad into the half really bad into the half but we do get ball half and like i said i do feel like i've been playing amazing defense so we're gonna be good but hey let's just let's just throw something back let's go are we gonna crib this oh <laughs> I'm literally the best. I mean, I just make shit happen. What can I say? I know he's heated. I just lateraled it, figured, the, hey, why not? And you know who ended up with that ball? Mr. Gronk. <laughs> I know he's so mad right now, too, but we're going to take that. Look at this. It hit someone in the helmet. I lateraled it back, and I crib shot that. Hey, now... I can get a touchdown and we're up. So anyways, like I said, we're going to get ball. We're going to get ball here and we're going to just hit him with flood. Again, he's leaving that sideline wide open for the out. The match coverage D he, he's tending to play a lot of does not defend flood at all. It's way better against corner routes unless you know how to break it, which I've shown you guys how to break match coverage, by the way. Check out that video um, if y'all haven't seen it. I recently posted it, how to glitch out match. But also, guys, if you want my full offense and defensive schemes, hey, make check, sure to check out sportsgamers.com. That's where I post all my premium content. Click the link in the description. Become a VIP member and use coupon code DUKE for 10% off your order. That gets you access to the entire site. Every ebook and tip I release, you will get access to. So if you want to win more games, it's the best place and the only place to be. So once again, guys, you can see he's basically played this match nearly all game, minus the few plays he went to Dollar that he just he got immediately out of because, you know, this offense is just too good against Dollar. He's just been running match ever since. Now he actually switched it up to man, just all out man. And once again, I went to my slant post combo. A thing about match is you almost have to think of it as a man coverage. It's almost delayed because it doesn't start off man, but it does convert to man later in the play so it's almost like beating man coverage just a second delayed so if you have man beaters they'll probably do well against match that's the way to look at it now right there i just literally just passed the ball because i thought he's gonna run commit and i guess right that's all that was so right now he uh, he went for two he didn't get it and i'm just really trying to make him pay for that decision i'm not gonna lie 
Um, if I go for two here, I go up six, and that allows me to score again, potentially make that a two-score game, right? So I could go up 14, potentially, if I can get uh, two, these two, this two-point conversion score again and get another one. So I'm basically just trying to make him pay for not getting his two-point conversion, right? So I'm going with trips, my slant post combo. Very basic combo, yet very hard to stop. When you have the, the flats, the slant, the post, and the end, no zones really def can defend both routes. And also, the slant and the post will be man. So honestly, you almost just have to watch for where they use her and just go away from the user. Anyway, back on defense, and you guys are going to see once again my adjustments to this max thing three. I have my zone drop for five yards for my curl, curl flats right now. So basically, that's going to take away any quick passes to the flats. And my deep zones will defend against corner routes because what I'm banking on is you don't have enough time to do like a street corner combo. See what I mean? Because he is not doing streaks. He's just doing outs, flats, and corners. The deep zones defend those really well, and I'm able to get a pick. This is one of my favorite defenses to use right now against tight formations. And as you guys have seen, when you mix it in with the spinner, the DB fire, it really gets confusing because as you guys see, like I'm getting one, if not two players free every time. I'm getting a combo of edge pressure and DM pressure. Guys, look, I've had these defenses on my site for forever now, and I got the full adjustments and the full scheme out there. It's in my weekly tip update, so make sure you all check it out, man. So now I caught him in a new defense. This time he was in cover two, but now he's putting his safeties into outside thirds. He's probably using the safety package because he wants to defend against my corner routes on the sideline. You know, that does a really good job. The only problem is, is he didn't he didn't guard a seam well enough. Just hit him straight up the middle with the Gronk, man. Hey, Gronk's been going crazy. And now we're about to go for two again, and we got Omaha. I can see his coverage. And honestly, I'm thinking he, this won't stop the run. So I just audible to the run once I saw his coverage. I was like, yeah, that's not good run, D. And now we're up 14. So this is turning into a situation where he's got to score. And you guys can see, I'm relentless. I'm bringing the pressure again. This time, I'm going to go to spinner. Now, he's audibling the bunch. So immediately in bunch, I'm thinking corner out. That's why I put that guy over there in a cloud. And then I can just use it in the middle. And there's how is that not intentional grounding? Like, literally every single play, I'm screaming at him. So, to, again, to protect against corner outs, I have a flat zone backed up with a cloud at a zone drop of 25. And I always do that on the bunch side to make sure they can't throw that. Now he's just not blocking anybody. Again, we're screaming off the edge. We're screaming from our loop on our linemen. And my responsibility in that defense is simply to watch the middle. Again, you can see that my curl flats are set to 5. Clouds are set to 25. So again, now we're in bunch. So once again, I know that I need to put the corner on the one receiver. Either deep zone him or you know shade up so I, they can't just throw a C route at me. And watch for the corner on the bunch. Potentially trail to the tight end. Now he had been blocking his running back almost every play. So I wasn't even like honestly respecting the running back. He finally hit him. So this is what our adjustments are going to be. We're going to keep the running back manned up. We're going to deep zone the one corner on the lone receiver side. And on the bunch side, I'm putting that guy in a cloud flat and backing him up so he can't throw a corner out. That just basically leaves me to use her the middle, like a slant, post, trail, either way. Now this time, I'm in a different defense. I'm maxing three. And we're going to go ahead and use her de seam ourselves on the right side. All right. So here again, there's really not anything open. He, he you know, he's getting pressure and having to roll out. And finally, he finds the tight end. He was on a trail route. It just wasn't open at first. Nothing was. Um, and I mean, he, he was kind of fortunate there. He, I'm not gonna lie. Once again, now we're getting a gap. He throws the out route. So you know, he he's starting to move a little bit finally on this drive. This is the first drive he's put a few plays together. Honestly, um, we, but we're gonna adjust. We're gonna adjust. So he flips his tight right here, and when he flips his tight, what I do is I put Hendricks on the right of the screen into a zone drop flat so he can take away the corner route, and then I can use the other side myself. And he just throws it right. That's a perfect adjustment, and we drop the pick. So again, I know he wants corner outs. So when I use her one side, all I have to do is put the other side in a zone drop flat, and there's obviously no corner routes are going to be open. Oh. <sighs> But sometimes, you know, Madden taketh, Madden giveth, and he got some fluke right there. That should have been a pick. Third down, you know, he runs the ball. That's fine. So we're going into the fourth quarter, and we're at the 12 now. So I kind of, once we get around the 10-yard line in the red zone, I change up my defense. I get really aggressive. 
I honestly like doing man blitzes down here and shading my coverage underneath. Now the thing is he's audible into this spread formation that Stack and I know this is a quick pass formation. So as soon as he does that, I audible out of my man blitz and into match because I know that if I run a man blitz on that, he has two routes he can throw in the seams and I'm dotted. So I audible out, get the pick, he quits.